Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. In light of what has happened to Stephen Twitch boss, DJ Twitch, I think it's time for us to start speaking straight to each other again. There is so much hurt and emotion and surprise, shock really, over what has happened to him that we need to start talking straight to each other because as we know, there was a time when ending your own life in the black community was unheard of. And why was that? Because we were still connected to the root of who we were as a people, the spirituality and the belief that God didn't want us to do that, that it was an unforgivable sin. We believed that we were too important to kill ourselves. And it's no wonder that black families are devastated because it is the last thing that we expect from our family members. The very last thing. And then we feel like we should have done something. We should have called. We should have stayed in touch. We should have told them that we love them more. We should have found a way for them to open up and tell us what was going on so we could help. And we're just agonizing over what we could have done. If they're not married, they should have gotten married. If they're married, they should not have gotten married. If they moved away, they should have stayed home. If they stayed home, they should have moved away. We, we start looking for answers. But the question for me is, why when we were at our very lowest, when we had nothing, when we were living in shacks, when we were having to share food with each other, when we didn't know if we were going to live or die based on what somebody else thought we did or didn't do, when we had no control over our lives, could basically make no decisions from day to day, it never occurred to us to end our own lives. So what happened? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think, even though you didn't ask. We have bought into somebody else's standards of everything. Their standard of success, their standard of beauty, their standard of right when we know it's wrong, their standard of good when we know it's evil. We have bought into what somebody else tells us is the standard for everything. So we have given up our own identity and tried to take on somebody else's identity, but it's not a good fit. We've gotten far away from who we were and become somebody that even we don't recognize. And so I think that what has happened is that the more we mix in with others in the society, the less value we place on who we are and on each other. So the standard that we are following now goes something like this. Anything but black. Anything is acceptable but black. Now this is the root of the problem. Because we didn't always do this. And when, when we were connected to each other, we had our own set of values. Now we've taken on other people's values. And that is bringing about these destructive changes that's going on with us. Now all of a sudden, you can be too dark. We're black people. We came from Africa. Well, most of us did. But now you can be too black. Your hair can be too nappy. Your features can be too broad. Something can be wrong with you just because you look like a black person. There's something wrong with that. Anything but black. And it's time to push back. It's time for us to push back from that. And I don't know who's going to have the courage to tell these black people that are running out here marrying these other races of people thinking that they are so much more beautiful because they're white and they are not and thinking that their children are so much more beautiful because they are lighter and they are not. And I'll just say black children can hold their own with anybody. They don't have to be mixed. Okay, but back to the subject. Columbus Short, the brilliant and handsome actor who used to be on Scandal and who went through an elaborate process of destroying his career and his reputation, crawled out from under his rock long enough to inform us that DJ Twitch had ended his life because he had lost a lot of money, millions of dollars, in cryptocurrency. Losing a lot of money is absolutely a disappointing thing. But 
It is not something that you would end your life. And first of all, he should not have invested all of his money into something as iffy as cryptocurrency. That's for people who can afford to lose five or six million dollars. That's not for people who are working for their living. Again, following somebody else's standard. Now, somebody made money. If he lost that much money, somebody made money off of him. Even if he lost that much money, there should have been something inside of him that should have grieved over his money, that should have been disappointed about that money, but should have said, okay, I got to get up and start over. Even if I have to move out of Hollywood, I'm going to start over. You do not end your life over money. And we're not certain that that's what it was. I'm sure there were a lot of things going on in his life. And I also find it inappropriate that somebody that's not a family member and that the family has not given you permission to come out and say something like that. I think you're very out of order to be going out there sharing that with the public without having received permission from the family to do so. I want to share this because I think it's instructive. My education began in a segregated school, and in that segregated school, we were taught black history. Having that background and having racial things explained to us in the way that we understood them helped us to understand our place in America. One of the outstanding African Americans that we studied, who was also one of the pioneers of the Harlem Renaissance, was Paul Lawrence Dunbar and he wrote a poem called We Wear the Mask. It reads, We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtle ties. Why should the world be overwise? in counting all our tears and sighs. Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but, O oh, great Christ, our cries, to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but, O oh, the clay is vile, beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise while we wear the mask. So we wear the mask like we're happy, like DJ Twitch, everybody thought we, he was happy. He's wearing a mask. We're grinning and smiling, skinning and grinning and bug dancing and shucking and jiving. But inside, our hearts are crying. But we wear the mask. We don't want the world to see our hurt. We don't want them to see our pain, our rejection, our disappointment, our hatred. The inner hatred that we have for ourselves and the outer hatred that we have for each other. We wear the mask. We wear the mask because we don't want the world to see our blackness. But sometimes that mask has to come off. But how can you take that mask off when you have built your life around that mask, hiding your hurt and your pain and your disappointment, skinning and grinning, hiding your tears, hiding the tortured souls that we come from. Our ancestors are still with us. The pain of that is still with us. It's generational. But when we put on the mask, we look good, we sound good, we can dance, we can sing, we play basketball, we can twerk, we can do everything that the world likes to see us do. But we're wearing a mask. And at some time, at some point, that mask has got to come off. And when that mask comes off, you got to face yourself. You got to look the man in the mirror. And when you hate what you see in that mirror, nothing, nothing can satisfy you. Now, that's my belief. It's all, I don't care what anybody says, I will believe this until I'm proven differently. The problem with us is that we hide ourselves. We wear the mask. Anything but black. Self-hatred, trying to live by other people's standards, trying to be what somebody else says they want us to be, and they're never going to be satisfied. It is manipulative, and it is a way of controlling black people, keeping control over black people, and keeping this economy propped up on the backs of black people. This economy and these people who run this economy depend on us 
continuing to wear the mask. Self-hatred. African American culture is the number one or number two export of America. African American culture. Now what makes up African American culture primarily is the sports, the football, the basketball, and the music, the entertainment, and all that goes with that. Black people are at the center of that. And when you see those black people, who do you see them with? Their best friends are white now. Their spouses are white. Their children are mixed. That is self-hatred to a certain extent. I'm not saying nobody, you nobody can ever fall in love with somebody else. But this is too many of them are doing it for just to be, oh, I just fell in love. This is programming. This is programmed self-hatred. Now, she's too dark for me. She's too dark. Making fun of, mocking your own people, people who look like you, that's self-hatred. And you don't have to have a psychology degree to know self-hatred when you see it. That is what it is. Wearing the mask, hiding your blackness, and trying to merge and try to become through some other race of people, somebody else. Wearing a mask, but inside, crying and dying of self-hatred. And let me just throw this out as an example of what I mean. Black men have been grieving over this man. Many of them had never even heard of him before. But they are grieving over him as well they should. But when they look at his family, they go on about how beautiful this white woman is, which she's just an average looking white woman that's Hollywood made. But she does not have a job. But she was a single mom when he married her. I haven't heard anybody in the manosphere say anything about that woman being a single mom. He adopted her child, something that they detest in black women. All that they have talked about is how beautiful this average looking woman is and how much he was in love with her and how important he was to their life. And now he was gone grieving for the white woman. If that was a black woman and she was a single mom, they would have built that whole case around her being a single mom and then not bringing anything to the table because she's not working. Furthermore, his mother is still alive and so is his grandfather that he spoke about on his Instagram page. As a matter of fact, one of the most poignant and heartfelt tributes that he made on his Instagram page was to his mother who raised him as a single mom. And not one of these raggedy Negroes has said anything about his family other than that white woman. Self-hatred. And at some point, we're going to have to push back on this. We're going to have to take off the mask and say, this is who I am. This is what I look like. This is what I sound like. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. It's time to take off the mask. And ain't nothing to it but to do it. It's time to take off the mask and be who we are. Present ourselves to the world. If we accept ourselves, other people will accept us. There are people who actually like black people. But if they got to like you with a mask on, they don't really like you and they're not right for you. I don't care who they are. If, it, if it's a black person, they want you to wear a mask. They're not right for you. And if you're trying to go into somebody else's culture, they judge you by their culture, not yours. So you have to make a determination about whether or not you can fit there. You do. They are not wrong. When somebody moves into the African American culture, we judge them by our culture. Because we don't know their culture. So that's, what, that's the standard they're setting. They are setting a standard by their culture. And then you either have to adapt to their culture or they have to adapt to yours. And it's, it really is that simple. And if you can come together and make a compromise, that's genius. Most people are not geniuses. But it takes genius to do that. Somebody has got to leave something behind. And if you don't want to leave something behind, you're in the wrong place. So we got to flip the script. If it ain't black, get back. And we can't be gaslit with this, oh, the black people did this and those black people that overwhelmingly black people are law-abiding, tax-paying, decent, many cases, church-going Americans. And that does not mean there aren't degenerates in our communities. There are. 
but overwhelmingly we are good citizens we are the best citizens of this country we have to take off the mask and push back this is the greatest challenge that faces black americans it's not white people it's not racism it's not white supremacy it's self-hatred this is the biggest challenge that we face and we have to confront it head on and we begin by taking off the mask and pushing back I'm okay, you're okay, we're okay. Take it or leave it. Okay, let me know what you think about this. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, have a wonderful day.